Welcome, folks, to the first of our Nevada This Week in Politics. It's going to be a continuous show, which we're going to do once a week. It's going to be me and my co-host, Bill Conrad. I'm the bleeding liberal. I'm the Christian socialist. And Bill is Genghis Khan, the conservative. <laughs> um, we've known one another for quite a, a while now. And um, we propose to do the latest news, Nevada news around politics. And during the weeks, we're going to have um, politicians and other people that are part of the political community in Nevada joining us to be interviewed. So, Bill, would you like to quickly introduce yourself to the <laughs> listeners? That's Bill Conrad. I'm back on podcasting. Um, Jonathan, first of all, I want to say, before I introduce myself, Jonathan has been quite the podcaster, two successful, very successful podcasts. Yeah, so for both his products and uh, Mailright and WP Tonic. WP Tonic has done real well. I really like WP Jonathan. 400 and some episodes, you're amazing. And uh, for me, I started podcasting I forgot back from um, Afghanistan and I worked yeah, in so Tell the listeners about um, your background in the military and your business. Quickly, give it a yeah, quick... Real fast. Tw- okay, I, I served 31 years active reserve, two years of Fed. I finished with top secret clearance over in Afghanistan. Uh, I did human train. Um, I had a top secret clearance, so I got to see a lot of strange things. And um, we'll, as we evolve, you'll find out some of my uh, viewpoints. And even though this is not on the agenda tonight... Um, the Hillary Clinton not being indicted for uh, her email situation, which even Jonathan and I, one of the few things I think we totally agree with, we, we, neither one of us like Hillary Clinton or anything she stands for, the Clintons. So that's one thing we do agree on. But I think most everything else, we sort of disagree on most other things. Yeah. So, so it should be a good show. That's good enough yeah. for me. So, we'll talk um, more. so listeners, um, we be, um, hopefully with Bill being my co-host and, and uh, me, we will give you a balanced view um, of yes, the, uh, of Nothing the, in the uh, middle, just right and left. <laughs> but, you know, a balance. You'd be able to choose yourself. Um, obviously, when we have our guests, um, uh, it will be more in the medium. Our it will be nice. We'll be nice to our guests. Uh, um, well, we're going to be nice to one another as well, aren't we, Bill? Yeah, so, well, we're always nice, sort of. Sort of, <laughs> aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> right, let's go. Um, so, um, we're going to choose some of the latest political stories in Nevada. And in the second half of the show, we probably will be discussing some national stories. We just have to see how the time. The podcast is going to be around 25 to 30 minutes every week, folks. Um, and we might do some bonus content at some stage, which you'll be able to see on the show's YouTube channel when we get it set up. So let's go into our first story, Bill. Um, Sanders holds lead heading into the Nevada Democratic Caucus poll finds. And this is from the Review Journal. Um, what did you think of this story, Bill? Jonathan, first of all, this is a great format. You know, one thing I would add, though, too, is we have six stories, right? Okay. This story, the culinary, the complete disaster possibly in the Republican nomination, the mayor of Reno, and mayor of Reno passed away, the ex-mayor, former mayor. We're going to talk about him. Mike Bloomberg. Um, we're going to talk about Mike Bloomberg and... The uh, Dave Doel uh, information, excellent stuff. Jonathan did all initial um, work here. In an article out of the Huffington Post about 1,100 former DOJ officers press against the Attorney General Barr. Um, and then, well, I think there's a second, was there yes. another story I left off? I think it was, but let's start with the Okay, first let's start. One. I just want to go with that. So I thought we could summarize so people could yeah. hear it. So you asked me, what do you think about the uh, Sanders holds a lead, the lead? Yeah, first of all, do you think he's going to win it? Yeah, I do. Oh, yeah, I do think he's going to win it. Um, I thought this was a really interesting poll. It's Sanders' whole lead in Nevada's Democrat caucus. And I always, I'm always, i really interested in polling. Uh, I've got a background. Of course, I was a city council vice mayor in between wars. Um, and uh, the I looked at 400 and some odd votes, and I looked at who put the poll on. I forgot. I, I listened earlier who put the poll on. And it looks like a reliable poll. It does, and, doesn't it? And it's showing what I'm surprised at is not that Sanders is leading, but that uh, Joe Biden is second, Elizabeth Warren is third, 
and we're missing, and then Tom Stiers is 11%. That seems high for Tom Stiers, and, and we're missing Kovarchoff and uh, Pete Budovich. Did I say this right, Pete? Yeah, that was fantastic. Um, yeah. I, call him, I call him Robot Pete. Yeah. I'm surprised <laughs> that he's not doing well. I mean, if he doesn't do well here in Amy Kovarchoff, that could be the end of their campaigns, even though they did well. Well, yeah. rea- the reality is, um, isn't it, Bill? Um, what I gather from the national posters is that their machine, you know, it, um, they they just either of them, Amy or Pete, really don't have the machine after Nevada and South Carolina anyway. Really, uh, um, they a lot of people say they just haven't got the money or the, or the organization to do a national campaign especially super tuesday what do you think about that bill yeah i've heard pretty much the same thing as their structure but you know i'm really surprised to see um tom steyer as high as he is here and joe biden joe biden seems like he's just like tubing it now bernie sanders the only thing that's scary here is nevada last cycle was definitely controlled by hillary clinton mm-hmm. yet i think bernie seemed to have more energy and more people showing up at his uh his fundraisers and his um speeches that he was giving i went to well one, you uh, know it's, it, it's kind of linked to our second story so we let's, yeah. let's combine the two because last time when hillary um her con- you know her support in las vegas through the Corey union was crucial for her victory wasn't it um and that union, that particular union has got, still has, um, which has been reported, still tight connection with Harry Reid. Correct. And, and yeah. his political machine. Um, so story two, Curry Union um, will not endorse um, in Democratic race. Well, the um, story behind this, listeners, is that they did. They produced a flyer that was very critical of um, Sanders, uh, Bernie Sanders, and they seem to be leaning um, to um, either Joe Biden or Pete or Robot Pete, as I say. Uh, um, but their own membership um, pushed back. You know, it was made really quite clear to the head of, of this particular union that their position wasn't going to be tolerated. So quickly they they released this press release where they said that they wasn't going to endorse any of the democratic candidates. What, what, this must be great news for Bernie in some ways, mustn't it, Bill? Uh, I guess, um, well, I, no, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I guess, I guess you're right because they're really, they're really torn. And it's not like when Hillary Clinton had that, stranglehold on the uh, party establishment in the state of Nevada. But you know, what's interesting is what do you, th- who, who do you think the establishment in Nevada wants right now? Biden, oh, Biden you know, and let's be frank about it. You know, I am um, quite critical of the democratic leadership, not the rank and file. Um, but I, first of all, um, I will be voting. I'll probably put my vote early in tomorrow and it will be with for Bernie Sanders. <laughs> um but uh, um uh, um but the establishment the um the establishment of the democratic party in nevada want joe biden or if they can't swing that they they're going to try um and impose well they were hoping they could impose robot robot pete as i call him oh. uh, um um but i don't think that's going to swing it but then um, we have the dark holes, uh, which we're going to be discussing later on. Michael, Michael Bloom. Bloomberg, yeah, um, yeah. who in no shape or form could you even describe? He's not even a Democrat. Uh, um, but I think it is good news. I, I think the ability of Harry Reid's political machine in Las Vegas to corrupt this caucus is still considerable. I I'll think- 100% agree. Hey, we're agreeing with two things. Um, but I think the um, they just wouldn't get away with it this time. I think the I think the Nevada Democratic Party would implode if it was um, and which is linked 
to our next story, um, which is um, from Politico. Um, Complete disaster. Feared fears grow over potential um, um, Nevada caucus. No, um, that that cannot happen, really. Could it? it uh, you know, it would cause such a <laughs> such a. You know, I'm I'm really quite surprised that the, the leadership of the Democratic National Party, you know, some of the actual core leadership hasn't resigned over what's happened so far. But if it was a disaster in Nevada as well, you know, how could the leadership of the Democratic Party not resign, Bill? Uh, you know, it's up to the states. The states run the, these caucus. This is a caucus. This is a, really a modified caucus that the Democrats put on. Each, each party determines how they're going to run their caucus and the rules. It's not done by uh, the state constitution or anything. It's just done by the party, and they actually count their own ballots. And uh, what they're doing is uh, three days early voting, which is not really a caucus when you vote. When you're no, it's, uh, it's, it's... And then you show up for the caucus, so... I don't know. And I, and I saw they have iPads that they're going to report in the vote. So we'll have to see how it goes. I mean, it's up to the parties to figure this out. But um, who knows? I, don't, I can't imagine they'd have the same disaster they had in uh, but Iowa. What, what would happen if there was serious discrepancies? You know, how, you know, it really would be disastrous for the it, national... It, I, don't think it, I don't think it's their national party's fault but it is the the local party's fault if it fails it really is not it's the states the states still control their elections i really like caucuses by the way i like real caucuses where you show up and you have dialogue it's an open vote and you bring people across and i've gone to one caucus in my life i was here four years ago and i did not vote for vote uh, trump on the caucus even though I, i like what trump is doing um, I, at that time, I, I, I actually got, got to, I actually got reprimanded and told off at the <laughs> at, at the Democratic caucus. Oh. Um, I, well, I, I was I was with I was for Bernie. We met up at a school mm. um, in Carson City. I started um, shouting out with my English accent, "Come <laughs> over, join join the bird." Join, join us with Bernie. And then I, was, I got quickly reprimanded. Why? They can't do that. They can do well, it. because they said I was intimidating the Hillary <laughs> voters. You're allowed to intimidate. I like caucuses. Caucuses are face-to-face. They're, they're not private. They're not a private, unknown vote. You get together and you decide uh, from each of your precincts who's going to win. And you got the winner. And then, and then the winner goes up. And it varies from each party. And then they put them all together, like they each precinct has so much of a vote, and that one with the most votes wins. And then in, in Nevada, that, uh, if you yeah. have a tie, they actually draw cards. We did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as a, as a quick sideline before we go for story four, um, have you take a not, break? Well, well, after we do, um, basically, have you been surprised that they're um, with the Republican caucuses and votes that there's absolutely really been no real opposition to the president at all. Have you been surprised by that? I know I am a little surprised. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy there's no opposition. I am surprised that there's no opposition. You're surprised that Papa Trump hasn't had any competition? <laughs> no, no competition. I, he's got a couple of people moaning and groaning, but no, no organized competition against him. Well, I think it's because... There's a lot of Republicans that like what he's done. And like the Supreme Court judges, all the judges he's appointed, uh, reducing regulations, making the United States energy efficient. Those are good things. And his issues, his international issues have not been that bad. Now, some of his techniques are completely <laughs> off the wall. <laughs> he's international positions. <laughs> are but, you sure about that, Bill? But, but the results work. I think he's a lot He's very smart. He's very capable. He just smart. Um, smart. Uh, so you, you can see, listeners, where this is this is going to be <laughs> entertaining. It's not. It's not exactly the first word. You know, I would link to our beloved president, intelligence bill. Well, he gets huge crowds. I mean, huge crowd. I personally think he is a lot more capable than George W. and then Bush W. Bush. Well, that's not. 
Well, as a, as, a, as a bleeding democratic socialist, that's not really. So, I've got to point out to you, Bill. That's not I a, didn't like Bush. That's not, that's not a very high barrier, is it, Bill? I didn't mind Bush as an individual. I didn't like him as president, though. No, I, I didn't. Yeah. Well, we're going off track. Like let's go. Let's go on to story four. Three-term Reno mayor, casino owner, civic booster dies at eighty-one. What do you want to say? You didn't want to take a break. We're going to go for a break in a minute. We're going to get more serious. Well, let's go for our break <laughs> first. Let's, in a while. let's go for our break first, folks, and we'll be back in a few moments. We done with a break? Can I we're clap com- my hands? We're coming back. It's very difficult keeping control of Bill sometimes, but I'm, <laughs> I'm doing a reasonable job. So, as very I said job. before, before we went for our break, let's go for story four. Three-term Reno mayor, casino owner, civic booster, dies at 81. What did you think of this story, Bill? I didn't realize he was that young. I saw him uh, at church uh, like six months ago, and he's a very n- nice person. He and we should say pleasant. we're talking about Bob C- Cashwell. Oh, yeah. well, Cashwell. We? I, read, I, didn't, you know, I came here about seven years ago after I retired, and I did not know a lot about him. I um, am watching local politics. I know that the trench was very controversial, the building of the park, the uh, baseball park, and the remodeling of City Hall. Those are three very expensive projects that he pushed through. But I didn't know he had a truck stop that he turned into a Boomtown Casino. I didn't know that. I knew he owned Boomtown, but I didn't realize he'd started and come from Texas. Very interesting story. Well, he managed to sell it just before the the collapse of, um, or to some extent, the collapse of Reno, um, casino industry. Um, uh, My understanding, he managed to sell it um, just at the right moment. Um, um, I met him a couple of times. I didn't know him. I was not close or knew him that well. Um, I think he did a reasonable job in very difficult times, actually. Um, Yeah. Um, he seemed, you can see, um, why he was successful. He was, it was obvious he was highly intelligent. Um, but I think he, um, I, I can't even remember if he was, a, was he a Republican? He's a Republican. Yeah. Yeah. I think he did a reasonable job in difficult times. You know, a lot of people that, um, lost their job, um, during the recession from the Reno town hall are not going to agree with me. Um, but um, I think the whole situation was imploding uh, around him um, and around the Reno Council. So um, he, you know, he managed things at very difficult time, didn't he? Oh, he did. Um, I'm learning more about him too. I just, I'm, he's. And you've got to understand, you know, listeners and viewers, if you're listening and you're not part of the Nevada has a terrible reputation, which it um, helps quite considerably with the facts of of being rather sleazy and corrupt. And um, to my best knowledge, he managed to steer it without any major um, people saying that he was corrupt or the administration was corrupt, which for Nevada is quite amazing, really, isn't it, Bill? Yeah, it is. But, you know, even he was he was yes. criticized for some of his expenditures. Yes. The only thing I know he's criticized for is his expenditures in yes. the budget in the city. Yeah, that's um, true. I don't, I, I'm pretty sure he was a Republican. No, he's also a lieutenant governor. Yep. Yeah, he knew what he was doing. So let's, um, let's go on to a couple other stories. These are more national stories. Yeah. We've, I think we found some of the best stories that was in the um and obviously that story was from the las vegas sun about um about bob yeah um um we will get all our stories from the leading media sources in the state and just put our views on them so there's no point in suing us i don't know about bill uh, i don't know about bill but i've got no money so there's no point in suing me <laughs> Uh, um, it's no point of coming off. Like, once upon a time, for I went back uh, in the military. Right, it's no yeah. point of coming <laughs> after me, folks. I, know. I gave all mine to my. I passed mine to my kids. So all I, right, very I nice. don't want to ever have right. one. Right now, um, let's go on to some um, national stories. Um, this one 
comes from a leading podcast um, called the Ra- the Rational National, and Good it's uh, David Adol. It's a, a podcast plus um, he has a very popular YouTube channel, and he did an excellent video about Michael Bloomberg. Now, um, first of all, it seems to me that this is clearly going. Um, this is only my opinion, but it's clear that um, we're heading for a democratic um, collision between Bernie and uh, Michael Bloomberg, aren't we? I think (laughs) it's obvious this is the plan from the establishment to use Michael's enormous resources to go against the, um, the machine that Bernie Sanders has built. What do you think of what I've just said, Bill? Well, two things. Um, it's going to be interesting. I, I think that's going to be the interesting part of the campaign when he starts really kicking in. And um, this Bloomberg, I, I don't know a lot about him. You know, he's a Republican then a Democrat. I thought David Dole, I think is his name, with the national, uh, the rational national. That was an excellent. I only watched half of it. I want to watch the rest of it. And um, it was excellent uh, presentation he gave. I liked the, the system. Between you know, you know, I'm into the mechanics of podcasting. I liked how he used Twitter to play the um, little bits and pieces. Maybe we can do that down the road. Yes. Put a feed in, which I think I know how to put a feed in to what we're doing here to play these tw- Twitter account, Twitter links. But um, I learned a lot from that little piece about Bloomberg. I know he was all over. Well, he's got a terrible, you know, he isn't, I don't consider him a Democrat at all. I consider that um, obviously the popular media, i.e. the cable TV channels love him. Um, because they're going to make an enormous amount of money from him yeah, entering. Um, so they're going to push him uh, uh, just like um, Papa Trump because basically yeah. they made they made a fortune out of the candidacy of President Trump, didn't they? They still are. And Jonathan, I think that's the third thing we agreed on tonight, and that's a pretty amazing thing. It is amazing, isn't it, Bill? Incredible. There you go. By the so, way, by uh, the way um, my feeling at Bloomberg... I think he, I don't think he's liked by the left. I don't think he's liked by the right. And he's not liked by people who like big Cokes, like more than 16 ounces. You know about that, right? <laughs> yeah, a lot like anything over 16 ounces in a sugar drink in New York. He did something else. I forgot something else, some of that food. Um, well, well, he, 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 uh, food. he enabled um, frisk and search of... Um, yeah. Um, the, um, search, uh, frisk, frisk, stop and frisk. Stop, stop and frisk. And frisk. Sounds like, sounds like something a bit poldy. Stop and frisk. And that's really an interesting phenomenon. I think, I'm not sure, but I think that was declared unconstitutional. Now, um, so to me, it's obvious that Michael is going to be the candidate of the um, Democratic establishment, and his sole purpose is to stop Bernie. Bernie. Do you think he's going to be successful, Bill? I don't know. I, I'll tell you what, um, I know they're playing around with, the Democrats are pl- playing around with the rules at the... Co- at the uh, well, there doesn't seem to be any rules when it comes to, change to Michael. They, the superdelegates do not come into effect until the second or third, and they're trying to make it move into the second, I think. The superdelegates are really screwy. The Republicans don't have that game. No, it's amazing. That's how Hillary won. Now, at least also, uh, um, when it comes to either Bernie or Michael... Which one of these do you think that President Trump fears the most? I think they both have their weaknesses. Uh, Bernie and the socialism might be just a little a bridge too far for the American people. And mm-hmm. I think that's going to pound him. Um, and Bloomberg, I don't think Bloomberg is liked by anybody. But if he does... Well, I'm not going to be voting for him. I will he never vote. the nomination, though, I think a lot of Democrats will vote for him. He'll have a lot of money. So I just think, have to think that Trump is more concerned about Bloomberg than oh, uh, I think the he money has, and the people. And, he has uh, dictatorial tendencies even worse than our present um, beloved yeah. um, president, and that's saying something. Um, but the Democrats will vote for anybody but Trump, I think. The, well, uh, not, I, not the, I'm, the not going, I'm not going to be voting for him. I make it quite clear, listeners, and I recommend that you don't either. You know, this I, actually, story, I but, actually feel... I actually feel if they uh, manipulate the system and, and they make Michael Bloomberg the actual candidate, I actually 
foretell that the Democratic Party will implode. Uh, I think you'll still have the establishment and a lot of money, but the Bernie people, I think they said last time 10% of the Bernie people voted for Trump. Yeah, well, I won't be voting for either. Uh, I, yeah, certainly won't be, I certainly won't be voting for Papa Trump. But um, It looks I like did. Trump is going to win. Yes, yes, in your dreams. <laughs> um, let's go on. I to, think he will. I, I do think he's going to win as long as, as, long as, um, as, long well, as he stays where he is. Uh, his ability to, to shoot himself in the foot, Bill, is unbelievable. <laughs> Every week. Uh, um, you know what we didn't talk about here and I'd like to talk about in the future? Yes. And this is coming to the end. We need to We've talk. We've got one more story to talk wait, oh, about. Wait a second. Okay, yeah. Go on, let's shall, shall we oh, get on right. with it? Oh, that's right. More than 1,100 one former funny. DOJ officials press for the Eternal General, General Bar to step down. And this comes from the Huffington Post. And it's uh, about the, con- the, um, Twitter, the Twitter storm that our <laughs> president at late night and Mr. Barr's pleads with the um, president not to um, Twitter about criminal cases, and also the beloved Roger Stone, uh, an individual that to say is controversial. We, no, we're, we're coming to an end, so we can only talk for about a minute on this. Yes. But I just want to make one comment. We've we got to carry on in this story next week, okay? But I want to make one comment. All those 100 and 1,100 former DOJ officers are the establishment. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. Uh, I, is that going to be the, the excuse for your support of uh, Papa Trump throughout this po- this podcast series? Is it's it, not Bill? the excuse, it's the truth. Is, um, well, the I just state. don't really get it. Um, I just want to talk about the deep state. Um, I just want to say uh, one thing about this case, uh, which is going to put me in hot water. It's going to put me in hot water. Um, I'm not a great fan of Roger Stone. I want to make that quite clear. Um, And um, he was found guilty of quite serious crimes. Um, But because of his age, I I think he's around, I think he's over 65. I think... He's between 65 and 68. If he receives a 10-year um, prison sentence, um, he's going to be in his late 70s. Um, I actually don't think that is fair. Um, uh, you know, he's been accused of serious crimes, but non-violent crimes. Um, and um, I don't think he should receive a a nine year, even though um, it was pointed out that the judge would have the bit of the right to give him a prison sentence of up to 50 years. Um, I think in America in general, the, they've got this insane appetite for enormously long sentences, um, which makes the um, private prison establishment a lot of money. So there we go. So we're going to end this first podcast of nevada this week in politics so bill if people want to learn more about you and what you're up to um what's the best way they can find out more about you you know i would say for now just go to timelinesofsuccess.com timelinesofsuccess.com that's my uh, one of my whole that's really my podcast my fun podcast so go there and we'll talk you know on the side notes i'm working on some other bigger projects podcasters home things of that nature but uh, go to Timelines of Success. You'll find my information. It's an older website. Yeah. So, and John, see, Bill, where do they, Bill, where do they Bill, find you? Bill's been a little bit sly here. Bill has run some uh, reasonably large campaigns for politicians <laughs> in Nevada. So he's trying to keep, uh, trying to keep that oh, secret. No, but I've hard. blown your cover, haven't I, Bill? Um, if people want to find out more about me, go to um, look me up on Facebook, Jonathan Denwood. Or you can find me on iTunes on a couple of other podcasts. If you do a search under Jonathan Denwood, they will appear. And we will be back next week. And we'll, in the near future, we'll be setting up a website and all the other uh, panophy. Oh, wait a second. Come. Where's what the website's going to be? It's going to be Nevada This Week in Politics. Very good. Com. Dot com. We'll see you next week, folks. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>